one, only one diplomat, me, Go Horns Go, talking about Media Wars 2, which is put on by diplomacybriefing.com, which also sponsors our podcast. Go there for any information about the diplomacy hobby, diplomacybriefing.com. It's absolutely free. All right. So Media Wars are diplomacy content providers, and we have an annual game where we play each other to see who is the best diplomacy player among the media. So I've totally stolen Zach Moore, somehow didn't make it to this year's Media Wars 2. He was in Media Wars 1, and he had some goals last year. My goal is to last longer than Zach Moore did in Media Wars 1. That's goal number one. He was eliminated fifth. So as long as I'm fourth, even if I'm eliminated in fourth, goal achieved. Second goal is kill Ezio, who's France. Ezio and Captain Meme are enemies of mine. They've been laughing at my play since the season two Nexus finals. And I've been waiting, waiting, waiting to get back. Will this be the game? That's a goal. Sometimes our reach uh, isn't quite what we want it to be, but I'm going to try. All right, just a little recap. I'm Germany. This didn't go well for Germany uh, in spring 1901. I've got Italy, France, and Russia bordering me. I had the diplomacy skills and work, work with France here to get Italy not to go to Tyrolia. He says he thought he was invited. Untrue. Not invited. Definitely not invited. England didn't go for Holland, thank God. Russia just held in Silesia, which I think is sort of inexplicable. And there looks to be a bit of an RT going. Juggernaut, complete cooperation here. There might even be a cooperation with Austria. I don't know what's going on. But right now, I love France. This is where we ended the episode before. France is number one. He saved me. He's got two builds. And even though my goal is to kill him, right now, I'm more than happy that he's going to keep me alive. So that's uh, where we are right now going into what's happened since then. So the builds. I built a fleet keel and an army Berlin. Now, I should say this, there's press between France, myself, and England, and we all were like, uh, well, England was the only one proposing the Western Triple, France kind of did, and this whole time I was against the Western Triple, which I just think means kill Germany later. England uh, had been working with France, it was very clear, France is sort of playing both sides, So I'm really not sure if France is the the person that I like or not. Uh, I was a little disappointed to see this fleet build in Marseille, but I understand it. Uh, If he's trying to show deception, I sort of let France know he could do that. Now, before the build is very interesting, England sent these demands to me and to France saying no other fleet builds, don't build any fleets in the north. Well, I, I don't respond well to that, but there it is. When someone just makes demands of me, I don't like it. I don't like it. And if he hadn't made those demands of me, I might go to Baltic. I still have Italy and Russia on the border. So this is my situation. Talking to Russia, Russia's telling me uh, that he wants to work with me now, uh, that he thought that there would be an attack on Munich with Italy and France and uh but like, why didn't he go for Berlin? I just don't understand. Uh, I don't understand why uh, he didn't go for Berlin. Maybe he thought I would bounce him there. I told him I was bouncing him there. I don't know why he didn't help Italy. Uh, he's saying it was so he could have me as a junior partner. I wouldn't have done that either. I would have just been mad, but I'll take it. Russia is Lady Razor, also a diplomat, a fantastic artist. So uh, I like the fact that Russia then told me I did a fantastic job and that I was masterful. These are all things that I need to hear. I have a very low ego uh, or high ego, and it needs to be fed. So I'm I'm like in Russia. And so we started, you know, talking about what to do in the situation. You know, where do we go? How how does it work? And I decided I was going to, you know, move to Skagerrak from Denmark and move Kiel up to Denmark and get my army uh, in position in Kiel to decide what to do next. I didn't think Russia was going to be much of a threat at this point. I made nice with them. I don't know uh, what France is going to do for sure with Holland, but England kind of, you know, messed up here a little bit. And, you know, Russia is talking about how he's messed up with England. That's cool. Uh, And so I write this press, uh, which is, uh, do you hate the English as much as me? Because England's very mad at me. 
and I invited England, I invited France to be down on a sea lion. Love the English, actually. I'm an Anglophile, but I always try to go for humor. So here's a little of my of my humor here, if you can read it. And France is mad. Why is France mad? I'll tell you why. Because England built a fleet London. And that wasn't apparently supposed to happen between the two of them. And England said he was moving to the channel, which he could do uh, unprotected. Or he could take it. He could walk into the channel. That puts England in a very powerful position to put puts France in the defense. And I haven't really had a lot of uh, hostility towards England, although I feel very hostile. So England really helped me out here by building that fleet. Uh, but France was upset. So he was ready to join with my anti-English alliance. Russia was ready to join. And France, you know, wrote me press and sitting there telling me, hey, man, uh, let's bounce and roar. And as I look at the map, that looks totally fine to me. I can bounce and roar. I uh, wasn't moving to Ruhr uh, originally, but I didn't really have much to do with Holland and Munich, and I didn't want to keep uh, Munich away. Now, the thing here is Holland's vulnerable unless Kiel supports, uh, but I just sort of trusted France here, which you kind of have to do. I got a good vibe that that was going to happen, that France would move on we and we'd bounce in Ruhr. So here's how spring 1902 went. Four-way bounce in Ruhr, kind of a pointless endeavor. But look here at England moving into Holland. Look at that. Uh, I had told England I was going to move to Baltic, so he thought Holland was open. Uh, it was open, but France did not uh, give him support, or he was trying to snipe me. I'm not really sure what he was thinking here at the time. Uh, he later tells me that in France worked out a deal, and the deal was that England would get Holland, and that London would not move to the channel and instead moved to North Sea. So I love this as Germany. I love it. Uh, main reason I love it is uh, as Germany, I like England and France to fight. And it was a little difficult at first here. France is being cagey, but this is a definite sign uh, that France is with me. And I'm all for that. Other good news, Russia continues to press an attack on England that ties up two units up there. That's fantastic for me. So I, I love that. Uh, notice that England didn't offer uh, to put me into Sweden. He just held Norway. I wasn't going to move to Sweden, so that's fine. But in other news, uh, Russia moves away, moves his armies toward Galicia, loses Romania, but takes Ukraine. And Turkey's confident enough to move the fleet out, so it looks like we've got an RT going here. And Italy just wouldn't communicate with me. And from my understanding, he didn't communicate with anybody else, which is a little odd for a content provider. But that's cool. Uh, he didn't try and snipe Munich. Instead here, what I see is uh, building another army, which presumably is for an Austrian attack. Uh, and then he's got a Turkish issue to deal with. So I'm sort of happy with the way uh, this situation is developing. Now, what do I do from here? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what, what I'm going to do. You'll have to see on the next episode. Uh, but it's time for the power rankings. Power rankings, spring 1902. Okay, who do I love? Well, I gotta, I have to put me first. England called me masterful. Uh, I rush called me masterful. I, th I think I am masterful. I think that's uh, fantastic. Uh, that is, you know, at all those armies against me, now I've gotten rid of Silesia. I have, still have two armies on Munich, uh, Burgundy and Tyrolia, but I don't think either one of them are threats. Number two has got to be France has to be France. Uh, France could have supported England and Holland. He definitely didn't do that. He tricked England. I think he thinks he can work with me. He doesn't understand my goal number two, but I'm totally down with what France has done. I think France right now is pro-Germany and I'm anyone who's pro-Germany. Gotta tell you what, gotta put England as number three. We're we don't like each other very much, apparently. I like Florida Man, the content provider. Uh, but Florida Man, the player, not so much. Florida Man, though, by his demands and his build in London, caused all this to happen. Uh, I'll tell you what, England's number two. England's number two. France is number three. France is number three. And, of course, Russia. Russia moved away, backed off of Silesia. That's got to be awesome for me. So put Russia number four. Gotta tell you what, I like Austria at number five. He's not messed with me. 
We had good communications, uh, like Italy here attacking Austria and not me. Tell you what, Italy, thanks. Didn't attack me. Number five, Austria here. Turkey here. Our mathematician, Oliver Lug, who's got a great video out on diplomacy. I think he's playing a great game. He's got an RT going. He's got Russia in his uh, pocket when he needs it. He's got Austria folding. Maybe he's going to win this game from what I can tell. But loving uh, his play, but because it looks like he's doing the best and that he's mind controlling Russia, Turkey's my worst player. My power rankings, power ranking Turkey. All right, that's all I have. Thanks very much for listening to this Media Wars 2 video, blog, log, YouTube, whatever it is. Go to the diplomats.net, check out the website. Spring 1902 is over. I'll be back on the flip side of the fall.